streaming here. One moment, the YouTube live streaming is initiating. One second. <clears throat> One, one minute. Ming here, one moment. The YouTube there live streaming. We have our echo. Initiating, initiating, initiating. Okay, let me hide that screen. Good, now we're live on YouTube. Welcome everyone, and just one moment, we're gonna click record here. Share hand, apps. Record on this computer. There we go, click this. So good evening and welcome everyone. As you know, I'm Dan Winter, fractalfield.com, fractalu.com. This is Fractal U. There's Dan Mack waving <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and Tufan is here, Jane is waving. It's gonna be a party, it's fun. Hey, <laughs> before we get started, uh, uh, Aircrete Harry, would you like to just show that little gizmo just for a second? It's such a cool thing. <laughs> Oh, un unmute, un unmute, uh, Harry. Oops. <laughs> Look at this, uh, guys. Let's try to get it. There yeah. So, so this is a um, a, a going to be an egg shaped vortex optimized, and if the idea is if the inside surface is smooth and coated with a high dielectric silver or gold, and then you have the high speed flat impeller at the bottom. And then, then you have the piezoelectric super pure water and Air Air Aircrete Harry is our pioneer for proving implosion. <laughs> He's got the <laughs> high speed ready to go. <laughs> cool, Harry. So Harry's gonna share with us if he gets the blue flash. <laughs> yes, and gravity. So the intention is after I, I assemble the entire setup, cause you know, that spindle is really heavy. Yeah. I'm gonna have everything on top of a scale just to also test the whole gravity portion of the uh, uh, experiment. So that'll be pretty exciting. And obviously, uh, you'll be the first people, group of people I share this with. This is the real implosion. And Aircrete Harry is the guy to do it. He yes. built stuff. It's so cool. And so you remember the principle, you have super pure water that, that can be charged. And then the water is piezo with some very fine rock powder. And so now you've got a piezo vortex. Then you've got a flat, high-speed, non-fractionated impeller at the bottom. And the inner surface is either silver or gold. And you get fun and magic. So thank you, Aircrete. We're going to have fun with that. So thank you for sharing that with the world so that we can begin replicating these experiments. Yeah, let's become a shareable wave. What else is fun? Everything else is boring. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, tonight uh, we're having a wonderful presentation from Jen Jennifer, Dr. Jennifer Markey, who is going to be talking to us about leading the luciddreamteam.com and her work with our lucid dream group. Uh, and, and Jenny has an amazing background with uh, training with uh, Aboriginal peoples and university projects and for many years in Fintorn and Australia, amazing background. So we have an exciting presentation lined up. Jenny has lined up some pictures for us, et cetera. Uh, and we're going to have a little intro to the science on that also. Uh, but before we do, uh, Tufan, uh, were there some in, uh, introductions, uh, announcements? Yes. Um, next week, we are going to meet with Mederic Degoy in a, our lecture, and uh, his website are elfi.link, biocoherence.net. Um, he's our um, friend from South France. And uh, other than that, uh, our piezofire.com project is going great, and our uh, conference program for South France is going great they are uh, we are still um, continuing our um, subscriptions and uh, these are it from my side thank you Tufan that's great yes so our international conference September 19 uh, fractalfield.com slash 2024 we have about 30 of the 40 uh, rooms already taken uh, and we're very excited that uh, Bridget Nielsen and some other VIPs have already agreed to come. And by the way, Dr. Susan, who's with us tonight, too. It's all good. So if you're interested in a wonderful party in South France in September, let us know soon. And then the other announcement was that the piezofire.com, uh, victims of our own success, 
uh, that the, we're still getting more more orders so fast that we're still on the order of three weeks or so. But we're we're improving. We're catching up. But it's amazing the interest we've had. I don't know, 15, 20 in the last week. It's it's amazing because as Dan Mack just told us, he's been using it again on his foot. And found, what did you say about that, Dan? <laughs> well, I I have a uh, uh, I have hammer toes, and um, uh, it's a genetic thing, right? And uh, I you know I I used to just do uh, mag, you know uh, Eps, magnesium chloride baths and stuff, right? And it's because I have to do a lot of driving, and it, it uh, you know my right foot is the gas pedal foot, so I, it's bent out of it just. That's just how it is. And I take the, uh, I use the, not the coil, I use the piezo disc, not the Tesla coil. And I uh, attach the, uh, uh, I attach it to my upper calf over the, the tendon that goes down to those toes over around my ankle. And then uh, put the, the other disc uh, in my slipper and then put my foot on top of that and then run the, uh, 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 the, Bull tracker cascade or the, well yeah well it's a cascade it's the cascade yeah. but it's it's for the foot area right and I, I just run that and i you know nowadays i mean the problem i had before was i had the the one disc on the bottom of the sole of my foot and the other disc on top of my toe area right so it's like and that was very uncomfortable it worked really well but i you know it just that it was too close so now that I've spread it out, it takes the cramping and just the, the soreness and everything. Just It just takes it away. And I'm doing it every day. Well, mostly every day. Only when I when I at work, I manage 17 buildings and we house homeless people. So I am very, I manage the physicality of the building. So I spend a lot of my day going to different buildings and working with vendors and checking on stuff, right? So it's the driving part because my foot, is is tipped over to push on the gas and that it that puts tension on that tendon and that and my 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 foot cramps up and by using the piezo fire it just takes it right away and if uh you know some days i can go for like two days maybe three days depending on my driving and it just it just works That's also wonderful. i i do a ace bandage and then do the piezo the uh the pineal gland and uh, and I do that uh, not every day, but every other day or every three days and uh, you know, before meditation. And I've been getting the Gurdjieff aura photography. Really? And uh, I have just seen just phenomenal results. I mean, it also happens with the quant with the uh, Therapy, but, you know, this is just the piezo disc. And I have to use an ace bandage because I tried headphones and. And they don't really, you know, it just, it doesn't keep it right. I have to wrap, you know, wrap it like yeah, a Yeah, it wants to be really in touch with the skin, I think. Yeah. yeah, and I know, I think Air Creed Harry or someone who was suggesting those sticky pads. Well, I'm a pretty hairy guy, and especially up here, I'm maybe not here, but on the side of the guy. And, and you know, it, it just, it's... It, That's great, you know. Dan. So really, thank you. So what we're learning is not only for pain reduction, and as he said, uh, the uh, decramping, but also uh, triggering the pineal really it, it fires the light. It's all about compression of charge, where the charge can get centripetal enough to get dense, which is perfect because that is the intro to the intro to the intro to tonight's conversation. <laughs> so as I, I discussed with Jenny earlier, so Jenny's going to talk to us about her the skill and practicality of leading a lucid dream team and her uh, experience also with the Aboriginals, uh, who she has a lifetime of experience with Aboriginal uh, sh Shaman Wisdom, who obviously are working with lucid dreaming. And the little intro that I, I'm planning right now is the idea, to, the title of this intro is The Physics of Dreaming Versus the Physics of Lucid Dreaming. And what I want to emphasize here is that uh, we believe that we don't have to approach the question of what dreaming is from the perspective of a psychologist or a philosopher, which is useful and valid, but actually talk about what dreaming is as an electrical engineer, which gives us a whole higher level of leverage to understand what's happening. So we know, for example, that as Freud or Jung would have said, that the dreaming helps you process your day. So for example, it's well known that if you can 
lie in bed at night and process your day like a play your day backwards like a movie and if you can watch that movie without interrupting it it means that you've emotionally digested your day what does that mean it means you've taken the experiences through compression in such a way that now all of those memories have been sorted into pure principle the pure principle being that which then serves essence it's only it's not the wound it's not the injury it's not the trauma it's the principle behind it that is can serve collective survival that is you know the eureka the pure principle of whatever happened in your day once it's been digested that principle then means that memory can be compressed which means literally that memory is now ready to go through death and we would like to understand exactly what that means electrically. Remember what we've been saying for years is that the ability to lucid dream predicts those who will take memory through death because consciousness is a liquid crystal plasma vortex inside the synaptic array of your, op of your optical cortex. So inside your head as it were. So as we say, you inhabit an array now. It's called the synapses, <laughs> the net of fireflies, Indra's net, inside your head. And when you lucid dream and when you die, you develop the skill to with an identical principle to inhabit a larger array. And that larger array, we now actually know what it is. It's the coherent compression nodes of the longitudinal array of the sacred sites of the magnetic lines of the earth, which the aboriginals, Jenny will talk about, call dreaming track song line. So the physics, and I do mean the physics of how you inhabit that longer, that larger array, the longitudinal nodes. Remember the longitudinal nodes grow in strength at sunrise and sunset. They weaken in strength at eclipse, okay? <laughs> they grow in strength inside a pyramid. They grow in strength at the magnetic cross points of the earth grid, dodeki, kosa, the sacred earth grid. So that th those magnetic nodes that are pumped at the certain times, sunrise, sunset, uh, or uh, solstice, solstice, equinox, those are moments when the longitudinal array is stronger and it's easier to then navigate inside or inhabit that array. So what is the summary here of the difference between the physics of a dream and the physics of a lucid dream? It's a very, very specific answer to that question. We're saying that the dream that you're playing with a hologram inside your head, you know, we talk about uh, the holographic brain, Carl Prebrum, and so you're propagating a kind of hologram in the optical cortex, and it functions as a hologram. It's, you know, they're, they're taking this more than metaphor, quite a literal physics, that it is literally a hologram in the optical cortex. Well, that's cool. But now what would happen if that hologram got dense? And now I, I want to point out something that in the university literature research, and we published this on the Lucid Dreaming site, luciddreamteam.com, and also in the Lucid Dream uh, blog at therify.net, where using Therify Plasma, we have documented with multiple reports, we're able to help trigger lucid dreaming. And we are proud to announce and report that the harmonics that are now known in university research, the frequencies around 47 and 30 hertz, a certain cascade of frequencies that very closely approximates PlancFire.com, the Planck Golden Ratio Fractal Frequencies. So, so the cascade of harmonics on the plasma vortex tornado inside your head, the harmonics act like musical fingers that enable you to get a grip around a vortex of plasma, just like the vortex of water that Aircrete Harry is working with. So the fingers that allow that vortex to be squeezed to the point of compression are no Planck times golden ratio exponents called PlancFire.com. Those are the frequencies that identify the vortex in your brain waves, the vortex in your sacrocranial pump, the physics of Kundalini, the vortex in 
the audio frequencies heard by meditators, the vortex in the implosion sound that we use to drive, therify, and flame in mind. And even that same vortex as it exists inside hydrogen. So actually, there's only one vortex that actually works to do the squeezing, whether it's small or big. And that vortex is the harmonic tensors of Planck times golden ratio. So the summary is that when you're able to access the Schumann cascade, which is the alpha to gamma harmonics that allow your brain waves to implode and identify when children are able to see without their eyes, also identifying when children begin to develop the clairvoyance and see their ancestors, also identifying the moment when lucid dreaming gains leverage. What that means is that implosion of harmonic cascades squirts out the squirt gun at exactly the Planck threshold, which it's tuned to, and from the Planck threshold radiates coherence in the longitudinal array, incorrectly called scalar or torsional, and enables you to cohere coherently inhabit a bigger array. And that's the only physics of ac action at a distance and the only real physics of lucid dreaming and the only real physics of how you can take your consciousness out of your body when you lucid dream and when you die. Because in both cases, your consciousness is that vortex. So now the development of the inner muscles to do that squeezing, which one way to measure it is the alpha to gamma cascade, literally the Schumann harmonics in the brainwaves, but also what creates that coherence and that compression, and therefore the densification of the aura, and the air, therefore the beginning of having a soul. <laughs> so there's also the, the eureka experience, the bliss experience, the peak emotions that also serve that implosive densification what sometimes some people call that going to the next dimension, but we use a much more specific language, we say, than the number of harmonics superposed, literally harmonic inclusiveness, which is the number of dimensions you live in, which is density, literally electrical density, that gives you leverage on the larger array. So the difference between a dream and a lucid dream is literally that implosive squeezing, that getting dense. So... <clears throat> That was my little, I stuck my two cents in. I probably carried on too much, <laughs> but uh, thank you for being patient. So so now I'm introducing Dr. Jenny Markey. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer is our guest lecturer for this evening. I has prepared a slideshow. Thank you for being here, Jenny. Go ahead, please. Oh, well, thanks, Dan. That, that really got us in the mood there, building the charge. Thank you. And, um, and, and thanks for inviting me again. You know, it's been a whole year. Uh, since since the last, uh, well, since we first started this adventure, particularly, but uh, and I I've been listening to you for over thirty years, so and it's still I still soak it in, you know, soak it in. I'm not that old, I didn't think, but anyway. Go oh, ahead. we are <laughs> we are getting older. ABN. <laughs> yes. So um, yes. Hi everyone. Uh, very happy to be here again. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go start sh uh, sharing the screen straight away because we've got quite a bit to um, oh, hold on quite a bit to get through. Now, what I thought I'd do was um, certainly to look at. Ooh, hold on a second. I'm trying to find the slideshow. Uh, we're going to have a bit of background because any any new people coming in from that didn't see last year's yeah we're seeing your slides fine we can see them yes it's good yes but um i want the main one i want the actual slideshow itself well if you click that button on the on the bottom right toward to the right there to, yeah, to, to the, the right, right of com to the right of comments there's no, no it's there. Not. one more there that one okay. that one that should do it. Yep, there it did. Thank you very much. Uh, so welcome, everyone. What we're going to do is a is a short run through. It, well, basically, this is in three parts. So we'll do a, a short run through of the history. Um, and this is a slightly different history than, than the one that, uh, that Dan has just been describing. Uh, then we'll do some updates. Um, as to what it actually means, the mechanics of lucid dreaming. Um, and then we'll move into the practice um, followed by questions. So if you can hold questions and obviously put them on the chat um, and Tufan will, will be able to um, assist us with 
those a bit later. And also, Dan, you know, if you feel to um, if you feel to come in, then please do. Um, right, I'm, I'm now trying to put uh, get us out the way so that I can actually read. There we are. Okay, so this is this is the broad story of of lucid dreaming because we're all descended from dreaming peoples. Um, every civilization has cosmologies of their ancestors who came from the stars and dreamed new cultures into being. Wait a minute, I'm just trying to find myself. Um, since the dawn of human time on this planet, lucid dreaming has been an essential part of healthy, functioning individuals and societies. And those societies rely on dreamers who can see beyond the limitations of physical reality, hear the collective wisdom of the ancestors, and translate that knowledge in daily life. Uh, those who can hold and tell the stories, sing the songs and dance the dances that bring the dreamy of living on this earth to life are the generators of culture. That's beautiful, beautiful. So well said. So I can know where I'm going. So this, oh, Yes, so this is a bit of a disclaimer because the type of lucid dreaming generally described as a hypnagogic state is just the beginning of a journey to awaken yourself while both sleeping and uh, sleeping and daydreaming as well. The um, it's what I call uh, the superconscious state, whereby you are utilizing far more than the typical four percent of your brain, where your natural latent capacities emerge. And your dreaming becomes your life. And, and, and that's the type of dreaming, lucid dreaming described in this presentation, because I'm very fortunate to have been um, uh, educated and ooh, certainly well practiced with, uh, with the Aboriginal aunties. I love that, Aboriginal aunties. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So uh, imagineering, in the ancient past, lucid dreamers were those who were able to access past, present, future knowledge, although we know it's all in the present, through their night and day dreaming. Uh, they recorded information on the local seasons, the lunar and solar cycles, when to sow and harvest crops, hunting seasons and migration tracks, times of catastrophe and lack and times of increase and bounty. They remember the times of eclipse, and lunar standstill, and the long count of the processional cycles, recording them in the stonescapes of chambers and hinges and in petroglyphs and other rock art. Beautiful. And this is Kalanish in Scotland, uh, a major astronomical observatory. And clearly a longitudinal node. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes, and surrounded by sites um, within a five kilometer radius. So. It's a, it's an extended site. Mm, wait a second. Um, so my ancestors of Ireland and Scotland uh, dreamed the extensive megalithic sites that connected them to the cosmos through lunar, solar and galactic cycles. The sophisticated sacred geometry and mathematical calculations used in both the construction of the monuments and the recorded information reveal minds attuned to the measured rhythms of the cosmic matrix. The common myth of primitive Neolithic tribal societies is obviously incorrect. They possess many skills and capacities that modern society has lost, including the Lucian dreaming. So other examples of dreaming cosmologies include the Slavonic Aryan knowledge recording the nine worlds of Norse mythology wrapped in Idrasil, the sacred world tree. The realms are connected by the Bifrost, which we know as star lanes, and the roots are portals, wells that connect to other locations out in the cosmic matrix. In Vedic Hindu cosmology uh, records multiple worlds suspended in the causal medium of the great ocean amongst countless other universes. Beautiful. Now this is um, this is my this is my adoptive home country and Dan's as well and Valerie's. <laughs> um, these are the First Nation peoples of Australia, uh, who are custodians of the lands, waters, and skies there of Nurrumbah, Goodable Country. This is at the most easterly point of Australia. 
the right, where the rising sun infuses Wollumbini, the peak that you can see in the background, remnant peak of a 20 million year ancient supervolcanic caldera, uh, charging the dreamy tracks across the longest stretch of song lines in the country. And um, at this point, I wish to pay our respects to the senior law women of the Norabu Gidabal clans, um, whose lands, whose sovereignty has never been ceded. Often a supervolcano will have the residue of the powerful trace mineral that makes the land more fractal and more magnetic, as, for example, the sacred rose fractality of Prague. So the supervolcanic caldera is a great start for something very magical. Yes, and as you can see, there's the very fractal nature. So in the foreground down there is the Junian Rocks, where Auntie Lorraine um, came to rest with her soul. Oh, uh, yes, and, and where the storm went across the continent when she died. That's it, yes, oh, across the wow. dreaming tracks. Behind that is it's, um, the, the three pyramids. You can't see the third one, very much set on Giza, the 60-degree pyramid um, complex at Giza. And oh. behind that is the actual caldera on Wallumbini itself. So very fractal landscape. Oh, yeah. So these are these are the original lucid dreamers. Dream tracks. Oh. So that that's a very short and rapid history. Um, so we're we're going to part two, which is how uh, how the cosmic matrix, how the unified field communicates with us and within us, as we know as lucid dreamers, and as we've just seen in the history. Um, uh, let's look at some of the, the mechanics and please um, come in, Dan, if you wish to as well. So the, our mythologies ground our genetic memory through this planet, um, solar system and galaxy, and, and that's nested within the larger star seeding cosmologies. Uh, they record how we are connected to multiple realms and worlds, orienting us in the present mythscape. Now, let's consider some of the mechanics of how we dream in the unified field. Uh, the hermetic maxims of know thyself and that which is above is like to that which is below. Um, describe the connections at microcosmic and macrocosmic levels of human function. So here we, we're going to bring in Dan, and perhaps you can say a bit about this as well. Uh, Dan, clarifying because we're looking at what uh, the qualities of the universal energy, and I've put in what we know as ether, plasma, or you call charge, Dan. So these qualities are compressible, behave like a fluid, uh, it stores inertia when it rotates, and in certain geometries, fractal, conjugate, etc., it appears to self-organize and become intelligent and alive. Um, would you like to add to that, Dan? But you you did so well. I'm retiring here, Jenny. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I just wanted to say that the as above, so below is how we sort of started when I rewrote the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. You know, the fractality of the heavens, and so the compression of the star geometries that then compress themselves in the Earth grid geometry, and then compress themselves inside the magnetic flux inside our brain that fractality enables the compression, which gives us leverage on the field around us. So you can measure how psychoactive you are in the dreaming or as a witch, <laughs> literally by how you know compressible your field is. As they say, the mind meld with the Orion queen felt like a vice-like grip around your head because you became the center of a very centripetal tornado. And that's really the trigger for the, when the dream is lucid. Why am I not? Oh, why is that not happening? Okay. So in a macrocosmic sense, what we're doing is tracking from the, the very large stories, the cosmological stories, and now we're bringing it down. And um, through a part of that, the medium of what we might call plasma or charge um, is recorded uh, through the original dreamers in Australia. Um, who record, uh, recorded the passage of plasma superstorms, which are sentient plasmoid ancestor beings and other phenomena in their petroglyphs and rock art. Our ancestors recorded images of external phenomena and events, and they also laid down images in our consciousness in order to navigate the evolution of our human bodies. Now that might, might seem a complicated uh, concept, 
but it's it's as if they were by recording the events and images themselves they were actually putting it into their own consciousness which then obviously descends through each of the generations maybe it reminds me of uh, john mcgovern a jenny and my mm. book, our friend who believed that he could interpret any cave art painting by learning plasma physics and the plasma beings became self-aware and they painted them. Yes, this this slide exactly. Tony it, yes, per it. absolutely perfect timing. So yes. the uh, the one genome you know, um, ancestors on the left um, and, and you can see that they're quite clearly painting the uh, plasma crown form formations after Tony Perrat. Tony Perrat of Los Alamos Plasma Research. Oh. You know, plasma physics equals ancestral shaman drawings because that was their their mind, that was their vision. Their, they mm -hmm. saw the light. Mm -hmm. And um, these plasmoids are recorded uh, all throughout the uh, throughout the world um, in many indigenous or those who are um, still have petroglyphs and rock art. Beautiful, uh, including including the Celts. So you can see the the plasmoid on the right hand side. Um, and uh, obviously the rock art of it called the Squatting Man, petroglyphs, and the material culture of numerous First Nations societies globally uh, hold the records of that. So this is uh, principally for the, for the reference, but also um, to, to look at the shapes because the, uh, this is the recorded currents and um, um, in the torus and the plasmoid. So I've got references a bit later you can look at. Yeah, they said the, how high that uh, the dots were around the waist allowed you to tell at what latitude, longitude the shaman was looking at the plasma from. Ah, ah that's interesting. Yes, fascinating. So the, um, the let's bring it right down into the human body now. Um, so the microcosm connecting the electrical human self to the cosmos. So on the left is a dissection of the nervous system of the human body. Um, it, and you can see the, uh, the, the intimations of or the dendritic style nerves, bundles, nerve bundles and fibers looking very much like a, like a tree. On the right hand side is uh, Alex Gray with, the, um, with his very famous painting of spiritual energy system. Um, and the, the torus that uh, emerges from a, from a lucid dreaming body. So we'll very briefly go into Heinrich, the Kluver constants because there's something about the, the records within the consciousness um, and as Dan was saying, within the visual, the visual system of the human. Um, these are visual phenomena seen behind closed eyes in a sequence during altered states, states of consciousness. Um, including going into lucid dreaming, um, however less so, um, more in um, when we are oh, using altered states and entheogenic plant um, forms to assist us. So he called these the form constants and they consist of lattices, cobwebs, tunnels and spirals. And these form constants are markers in human neurobiological makeup. They're literally hardwired into our brains um, that both lead us through each successive stage of alter altered consciousness, enabling path integration on our dreaming journeys, like a trail of breadcrumbs through a deep dark forest and um, so that we can return safely. Universal symbolism evolved from these visual phenomena witnessed in the dreaming or recorded from physical events. And I would argue that iconographic and symbolic art acts as Monomic technology, which is like a memory, um, memory type of technology, hardwired into the brain to reflect and trigger the remembrance of past events, as recorded on on petroglyphs, particularly. We we thought Heinrich Cluvet, well, he was uh, recording the experiences of near death experiences also, and that lattice cobweb tunnel spiral were literally superposed axes of spin one upon the other. What your DNA had to do to get compression going. To, uh, to die well or to lose a dream. Mm -hmm. So petroglyphs and other rock art of our dreaming ancestors also record natural processes of our physical and energetic interconnections with the universal field. So on the left is the uh, Triskelion. Um, on the right is a diagram of uh, a protein, um, the protein clathrin 
Now, this is, these are def, different variations of the Triskelion through um, history, recorded in uh, rock art, particularly in Celtic lands. Now, sorry about the image on the top. This gives a very brief, very, very brief introduction. Clathrins are proteins that enable the transportation and delivery of information into the cells of the body. Um, what, um, while current debate rages about microtubules and consciousness, our ancestors had already dreamed about and recorded the mechanics of interconnectivity at the cellular interface. Mm, beautiful. And the clathrate cage in water, for example, or even fullerenes, is always that stellated dodeci cosa imploding. <laughs> Yes, and, and I think that, yes, the point here is that by them going into the into dreaming lucidly and then bringing it back out and obviously recording it for us, when we come upon it, whether we, you know, it's analytical or the analogical brain, um, it takes us back into ourselves. So it's a type of inner, inner remembering, is it not? Mm, beautiful. So, I, you know, I, and I hypothesize that because the the more that we're understanding, um, the more that we're understanding about toroidal fields, and and we're seeing them everywhere. Um, this this is also um, symbols that are part of the neurology neurobiology of humankind, and the, of the torus and the toroidal fields. And as we cross the plank threshold and remember who we are in the wider array, it's literally. These are the symbols and uh, the iconography, the, the form constants that we need that are leading us out into the wider array. So and, we implode through the Planck threshold where presumably the transverse EMF becomes longitudinal and therefore able to propagate efficiently into the array. So the Planck threshold is kind of a doorway in this sense. Definitely a doorway, yes. So that that's a brief ooh, brief um, tour of the mechanics. Um, well, now I get on to part three, which is um, what does it mean, practically speaking, to be a shareable wave as a lucid dreamer? Um, and we're getting more into the practice of uh, the dreaming groups that we've been a part of. And this wonderful Walter Russell um, quote, so mm, I put out a tentative definition, but I'm, I'm open to uh, discussing that. So lucid dreamers are those who are able to tap into and transduce the knowledge of the universal field, stepping down those forces to energies that are recognizable within human perception and that are in phase with the natural dream stories of the planetary being. And finally, lucid dreamers tell those stories through culture, the arts and sciences, literally perpetuating life. I love the, the in phase part of that story. You know, in phase is the name of what's happening to become part of a longitudinal array. And in phase is the name of what's happening when you have access to ground, literally Schumann harmonics and earth and fractality. So in phase is everything because that locks you, embeds you into the array. It's a good term there. Mm -hmm. So... But what does it mean? How how do we become lucid dreamers? So uh, different different subsections here. So we'll talk about generally about gathering and generating and holding charge, because uh, as we need to, if you like, toughen up um, our bodies and energetically and physically as well, the nervous systems, in order to be able to hold more charge. What do we do? Uh, in order to you know, per, help help with that um, on a daily basis. Now, obviously, Dan has Dan teaches a whole oh, oh what would we even call it? Um, a lifestyle of uh, being outside, being in natural places, um, living a healthy lifestyle, including thoughts, um, uh, integrity. Um, oh, I've got all sorts of wonderful things here. Hang on a sec. I'm just going to. So, learning to be shareable waves um, is a development of qualities, skills, gifts, and talents. Um, and as you can see, you know, there there are quite a few. The will and courage to see and dream, because once you look inside and open your eyes, both inner and outer, there really is no no going back from that. Um, the only way is onwards. 
the ability to focus and hold attention. This is obviously part of the physics as well as the, um, the natural biological uh, um, mm -hmm, fitness training that we're doing. Uh, the ability to generate, gather and hold charge. So being generators of um, charge and not parasitic. Uh, freeing ourselves from fear programs and patterns because uh, we all have a lot of patterns. Um, and um, being able to well, be willing to move through those, uh, even to recognize them and release them if necessary. Developing intentionality, integrity, good energetic hygiene, and self-responsibility are but a few of those. Uh, being willing to suspend beliefs about what is real and unreal, because everything that you, you may think that you know about um, lucid dreaming and what, what I call true dreaming, um, is when <clears throat> that, which is when we start creating the dreaming ourselves. Um, we need to suspend belief. Um, balance, coherence, centeredness, groundedness, which is all once again part of self-management, and gaining self-understanding, compassion for self and collectively. Um, lots of qualities, big list there, and if that wasn't enough, <laughs> we've also got Mindful, cooperative, interdependent, being prepared to be vulnerable, permeable, and open to others, and practicing what we practice, um, preparing to become ultimately shareable in the wider array in every aspect of our lives. So when we say shareable, what we mean is a wave that can propagate because it's so well in phase that there's no resistance. Uh, you know, fear is the mind killer because it is resistance. I also love Jenny's uh, uh, yearning is the waveguide. Yearning is also in some way the how the tornado is ultimately steered and why we might admire people like Jenny because you've got a group that's lucid dreaming together. So now you've got a collective tornado. And how is that steered? Uh, Gurdjieff said, charge the battery of yearning, even though the Buddha, Buddha said, eliminate desire. <laughs> eliminate, yes, yeah, good one. So this this is it in uh, pictorial form. Well, for, first of all, we have we hold the intention, we find the intention in our dreaming. We go into we go into dream time, as in sleep dreaming time, with the question, you know, what what do we want to see? What um, we ask questions and then we sit. Uh, when we get the answers, we sit up, write them in journals. Um, we meditate on it. We we use uh, a good time of the of the night is between two and three a.m. when there is a the peak of melatonin um, to actually go into the lucid dream itself. So then it becomes an action. So and a practice. And then a consistency, a habit, if you like. And then it simply becomes who we are, which is what um, the aspect of, of lucid dreaming that I'm um, that I'm talking about and that we are um, dedicatedly focused on. I had heard that that 2 to 3 a.m. might also be when there is least noise in the astral or something like that. Mm hmm and, and we also, um, we synchronize daily um, at sunset or well, sunrise for some and sunset for others, um, various, various natural times when it's um, easier to slip into a lucid dream. So and sunrise and sunset are specifically when the longitudinal array is accessible, when the birds sing and when, when Agni Hotra works. That's the longitudinal moment. Perfect. Mm. So all of this is, I would say, mainstream. There's also this the sense with Dan leading us to the threshold, um, and uh, and um, very elegantly handing us over into the wider array uh, that we're dreaming of the Taurus and we're dreaming of toroidal fields. Uh, we've got people like Buddy who, um, Buddy James, who are who are mapping actually mapping now. So to be able to navigate these these wider arrays. Uh, it takes courage, um, and amazingly, we find that uh, one one matrix is nested within the other, um, and I guess it goes on in uh, infinitum um, as as we'll continue to explore. So, navigating the plasma field, and um, we are spatial beings, 
um, effective navigation in wider fields requires us to build up a cognitive map of what we are engaging in, as in putting out, setting our intention, who we are engaging with, you know, being being very clear that we are we don't act, well we don't now engage with the astral realms and astral beings. Um, we don't need to do that. The mechanics of voyaging, and most importantly, how to self-reference well enough to return to our physical bodies intact in mind, body and soul, which we call path navigation. So do you want to talk about the toroids? Maybe, maybe this is this is one of um, two fans amazing yes. diagrams. Yes, and we say embeddability, and the ability to embed means that then that's what enables the shaman to steer the tornado in the first place. He's identified the pain of the tornado, embedded in that by literally feeling compassion, the heart turns inside out, becomes centripetal, and then the bioplasmic streamers of the shaman suddenly are in the center of that tornado, and it's literally, fall, the tornado falls in love with, who falls in love with whom? It's literally about embedding. And of course, it can be both at a, an individual level and a group level as we are doing. Mm -hmm. um, which is uh, being shareable enough to and coherent enough to create a, a collective uh, tornado in which we do, um, within which we journey and without which we journey as well. So they say the lucid dream group uh, would first begin by crying for each other's joy and pain and embedding each other and then... <laughs> yes, it, it's certainly, um, it's very intimate in that way. Um, hold on a second. I'm trying to find my. Oh, where's my cursor? So this is actually uh, in Byron Bay in the the lands, waters, and skies that I showed you. And th this to me is oh, is indicative what it means to actually surf the wave because we're as a group we we sink and. Um, set our intention very clearly and then um we're, we're literally like surfers waiting waiting for the wave to come through and obviously that wave we feel the human resonance the longitudinal wave is is the very long wave it is very much like surfing in the ocean and it is the cosmic ocean i'm just going to play this again because i love it so much see the dolphins there um oh. and that uh I don't know if anyone else can feel it, but it gets me every time. It's it's like I'm I'm up and surfing. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Uncle Joe said, "Ride the long wave, Uncle Joe." Surfers yes. of the Savuya. <laughs> and it really does feel like that. <sighs> so what what I was uh, speaking about. Um, a path integration. So in order to be able to come back, but in order to go out, I mean, I, I would say many people are able to get out into the wider array. It's whether or not um, how you navigate and to be able to return on the same path so that you are not um, subjecting yourself to either any kind of astral parasites, Klingons, um, gremlins, whatever you want to call them, hungry ghosts, um, uh, and a part of that is uh, uh, developing the fitness to be able to see what's going on inside your own head and your own body, as well as being able to navigate externally. So this is this is a part of what we practice every week um, is navigation skills. Part of why non-destructive self-reentry by some is a definition of consciousness, the ability to implode within and therefore gain leverage. Mm -hmm. Yes, gaining leverage. So what, what works, what we found in, in the last year of uh, great adventures that we've been having, um, there, there are certain principles, uh, the basics. Well, one is providing our biology with a reason to evolve. Now, that sounds very simple. However, it, we are brought up in a society whereby, you know, you work all day and you come home and, and you just zone out and then you go to bed and you zone out again. So actually the physical practice of um, letting, your, letting your body and 
brain and consciousness know that actually you need to evolve. Um, that's the tricky one. Now, hmm, sadly and, and uh, interestingly, obviously with the with the recent COVID um, pandemic, that that provided us, I feel, with our well, our biology, our bodies, with a reason to evolve. It, it was like a trigger. Um, do you want to say anything more on that, Dan? Well, that's giving us because once we understand that the coherence we develop with the skill of lucid dreaming is specifically predicting who is going to take memory through death, leading beautifully to Jenny's next point, study the mechanics of ensoulment. And I am big on that, that actually that compression event, whether it's glands or in the DNA, that implosion spits out the coherent longitudinal stuff, the ba from the ka, you know, the kejan light body. And that literally is going to be whether our kids have a soul, whether they get access to bliss experience. So understanding this in the context of mechanics of ensoulment, that is the heart of the matter. As our species on this planet is apparently rapidly losing ensoulment because our scientists don't know what that is. Mm. Yeah, um, and particularly with the increase in technology and uh, electro smog and interference. Exactly. Um, exactly. It, that's a whole other topic, yeah. is it not? Yeah. Exactly. Um, so we we hone our focus on pure principle. Now, I I say it in the sense of um, biophysical, which is bringing bringing our attention both to in internally to our heart space. Um, and as a part of that heart resonance, and also um, has to be connected with the intention of the, um, let, let's call it the consciousness, the, the third eye, the, the internal mechanics of what it means to uh, focus your attention. And um, part of that is the pure principle of uh, our integrity as when we talked about distilling the memories of your day, it's exactly distilling it into pure principle, and that wave can live forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Now, also courage. I need to say about courage um, that to be prepared to prevail. So part of that uh, providing the biology is having uh, increasing our determination to evolve, to be able to dream um, obviously lucidly and then to true dream as in to bring to become your own dream to own your dream and then to also bring that outside of yourself so this is uh, what uh, as Dan was saying this is what we are doing for humanity which is now we are all needing to dream um, the, the next the next level of dreaming for humanity uh, big task no pressure <laughs> um, however, it does take courage. Um, now, uh, part of one of the other things that works is that that we we need to be able to respond. Um, I'm talking about in this in soul in the soul pod, um, respond to the responsibility for the whole pod. So that's not uh, you know the, it's on a daily basis. We're in contact. We, as I said, we synchronize um, daily and. Um, practice that coherence, getting to know each other, being prepared to support when uh, you know, one person is wobbly or uh, extremely busy with external reality, whatever it is, it's to responsibility is what, to the ability to respond and to be prepared to become more shareable because it is often very vulnerable um, often confronting and um, to be able to trust uh, the others, the other, you know, your fellow pod members, um, that they're they're going to be there for you and have your back. It's, it's, it's like also imagining what it would be to have a life in which you do not need secrets. You know, we're evolving in a civilization where everything is about secrets. And yet yeah. immortality is precisely the life in which no secrets are possible. Ooh. Yes. Yes. And um, we're not talking about telepathy. This is about discernment because, um, you know, telepathic, you, I find that uh, we are all becoming more sensitive to be able to feel other people's feelings. Um, and there's also, we're starting to have the intimation that, um, you know, the next planetary grid is actually that between human hearts. 
um, it, it's not necessarily well as well as uh, what we call sac sacral sites where charge and intention has been um, gathered. It's also between us, um, and uh, I do believe that we we are at the forefront of um, the the new science of consciousness, literally. Um, so we're also doing it naturally, no enhancements. You know, we're, it's part, up to pod members about um, uh, whether what uh, what means that they're using. Um, however, when we come together, it it is purely on our own um, natural abilities that are and should be second nature to, to us, should they not be. And okay, so this is a, just one of those cautionary, uh, I won't read it all. I mean, da Dan is particularly um, clear about astral, what we might call astral hygiene. And when, especially when after we've been journeying together, uh, we always come, when we return, we clear ground, uh, you know, check each other out, um, dust each other off, and um, make sure that, you know, we are, we are clear in this way. So obviously, things like smartphones and mobile phone signals, Wi-Fi, um, you, you know, are, are not just distracting, but they're also producing that electro smog. Now, Really, the last the last question, and I'm not going to go into it too deeply. But, but this this slide is just not just this slide is to show the many different ways uh, of actually communicating and how we communicate as human beings, um, including you know how we speak, how we present us, our space, how we touch each other, um, chronemics, chron chronemics. I mean, how we use our time. Um, how we draw attention to ourselves, uh, you you name it. There are, I'm sure there are, as there are many different senses, there are many different uh, ways of communicating. And for, uh, for me, this this um, presentation tonight has been a part of that, which is um, trying to show the the nesting. It definitely is that that we as individuals nested within the pod. For me personally nested within collective families and community. And so it goes out with the, um, the Russian doll nesting, does it not? <laughs> nice. Um, so learning to question our dreaming selves, that how, that's the first step. And then to also to be able to communicate those responses, that is also a part, a vital part of the process um, because it stimulates our bodies to transform and evolve into what I call dream weavers where our dreams themselves become become self-aware. Um, so wow. we are literally dreaming ourselves awake. So, oh, I think that's it. What a bit of a whirlwind journey. Um, and thank you, you know, deep gratitude to all of our ancestors and those who've surfed the waves before us and to the veterans and soul pod one and two who voyage with me into infinity and beyond. Deep, deep gratitude, and to Dan Winter, <laughs> who brings us so elegantly to the threshold. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> well, gratitude. Well, well Jenny, Jenny, I I have a question for you. Actually, um, it 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 might even be somewhere in the ra range of envy. Uh, see, w when we have a kind of a group meditation going, group dreaming, what it call it, whatever you like, but. Some people have the skill to be able to feel and see where the group is going. And I don't think I have much of that skill, actually. I wonder if Jenny could say even a little bit about what it is to be able to sense where a group is going collectively during a dream or a meditation or Ooh, good how to feel that. <laughs> oh, yes. Good pithy question there. Um, shall I, can we just hold that for two seconds? Oh, sure. Um, because I'll mostly because I just want to come out of the slideshow and so I can see everyone's faces. Um, so we finally, finally, an onboarding course for those interested in dreaming and voyaging with us, or those who are content to be what we call ground crew with a general interest and want to support um, want to support in that way. Um, and heartfelt thanks to those who came on board last year and have been patiently waiting 
and holding the space for the group uh, for the group to emerge. So that um, that's the there is an invite link world worldwidewave.earth and um, oh that's great. So we should add that to the the sites here worldwidewave.earth. That's a way of coming in. Is that right, then, Jenny? Great. It is, and um, it's just the front page at the moment. But you can subscribe and leave your emails. And, Wonderful. We'll uh, add the link. Perfect. Well, yes, we'll get uh, we'll get you into the, the we have a Telegram group. Um, uh, and um, we'll take it from there. And yeah. and as a last slide, here's um, some great <laughs> some great books. But once again, instead of having to scribble them all down, um, uh, you can see that we can see this um, uh, slideshow again. Can we not? Um, yes. So we're going to share this. Like, if that's okay. Yes, mm -hmm. we'll share it. Next, okay. the link for the film for tonight. We'll put this uh, link for the slideshow if that's okay, Jenny. Good. Yes, uh, yes, that's perfectly fine. And there is a PDF, and you can also get a transcription from YouTube. Can you not? Yes, exactly. Uh, coming soon to a theater near you. Coming to a theater. <laughs> yes. Uh, so th thanks, everyone. I'm I'm sorry I couldn't see your faces, and and I'm looking now, and I'm seeing Pod One and Two. Like, oh yes all your lovely faces. Thank you, everyone. And um, for those who want more information, please, please get in touch with us. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, and, and we'll also look at other questions, shall we as well? Um, um, Jen, mm. uh, Jane Hera asks if you can say a little more about the role of ground crew. The role of ground crew. Okay, so we'll, I'll talk a little bit, I'll answer, try and answer Dan's, mm, Dan's question as well. What, what it means to, to what I call it, I call myself a navigator. Um, I am very fortunate that my, my boot camp um, occurred with uh, three amazing Aboriginal aunties who adopted us. And this is the tribe that Dan and Valerie are also um, adopted into. Um, now, the, um, my awakening was um, very, very practical in that. Um, during my training, well, Auntie Lorraine took me on as a, her apprentice um, and taught me. Um, and what they would do, quite literally, how I came awake is that they would they would walk into my dreams. This this is how I came awake in my dream lucidly. So I had a, a steep learning curve in that they would come into my dream and I'd just be dreaming, maybe even not even noticing that I was. But the very act of them coming in and me going, that it gave my biology the, the jolt, the shock, if you like. So they would walk into my dreams and say, come on, girlie, you know, and then it would be a nighttime of teaching um, that uh, those um, uh, geomancy, custodianship, what it means to be a part of the planetary grid. Um, uh, so I've been very fortunate. And um, now I'm... <laughs> So from my navigator skills um, are definitely a part of that, which is that I had the fast track to uh, being woken up into my own lucid dreaming. Um, I also come from a very psycho-creative uh, cultures, uh, the Celtic culture, both Scots, Scots and Irish um, ancestry, uh, who are very connected to the cosmologies of the star lanes and, and traveling as well. So. How, how I navigate, hmm. very, very difficult one to answer um, because it's both a, an inner seeing and an outer seeing and then also seeing for everybody else. So uh, it's an amalgamation of uh, forces, energy, training, bloodlines, um, and um, that, that's about as much as I can say, Dan. Is that an answer? Well, God, you're beautiful, Jenny. This has been just so much more amazing than I even expected, Jenny. Good work. Right. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, Jane, Jane Hera, um, what it means to be a ground crew? Well, you can have a, you can have a general uh, interest in lucid dreaming itself. Do, you may not feel that you want to journey or you may not feel that you are what we call sky crew, as in those who are, who are regularly practicing um, you know, uh, pushing the boundaries of um, our human 
um, human under self understanding and bringing that knowledge back as in, in serious research. We do serious research on the edge of the science of consciousness in much the same way as you know, John Lilly and the, um, the, the psychotropic um, pioneers, as I call them, um, them getting out there. We are doing exactly the same thing. Dan's, um, the, Dan's physics literally is the focus that brings us to the threshold over which we can then move out into the expand into the wider array. So this is serious work. If you wish to have, well, if you have a general interest, um, we're not so much into dream interpretation. We're actually dream living our dream um, more than interpreting them. Uh, you can help out in whatever way you want, or just do the reading. So hopefully the the onboarding course will will be putting a lot of literature in. Um, and uh, one of the other things, make sure you come to Fractal U and the con and the conference. <laughs> That's a really good way to be ground crew as well. Uh, giving new meaning, perhaps, the term living the dream. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Living the dream. <laughs> yeah, two fans. So, uh, have we got any no. more? Um, another question is, do you have some system or literature for interpretation of dream characters and objects? <laughs> so, sorry for laughing. Yes. I mean, the, the, that will be included. However, I th this is not something that... Um, I am um, an expert in myself. Uh, I, yes, I can certainly pass on material. Um, I, but, however, I don't know. There must be other people who are very good with the, the Jungian, the psychotherapeutic side of, of dreams in that way as well. Thank you. Um, Laura asks, can we tune in at a certain time and day without Wi-Fi and we terrify? We do have, um, I don't know if Maurizio is here, we do have a Therafire practitioner, he's in Costa Rica, um, and part of our plans, research plans, is actually to be uh, journeying regularly with um, with the Therafire as well, because as we know, the Therafire uh, enables um, intercommunication with uh, trans-dimensional beings, we're very careful with what we do, um, so, yes, I'd say technically it's possible. What do you reckon, Dan? You know, Therify is one, uh, maybe a bit artificial, but powerful and useful. And the global meditations we did with it were maybe even a little bit too powerful sometimes. But I would stress that it isn't about needing a gadget either. It's a wonderful thing. But even the sunrise sunset thing and the equinox solstice is beautiful and powerful in embedding in longitudinal arrays together. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, could we try a short lucid meditation here? Ajda asks. <laughs> I, I don't know. Is that is that Anya? <laughs> Aida, Ajda. Or... Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. I mean, yes. Of course, we could. Couldn't we? <laughs> everybody. I think it, it's everybody. If everyone goes, yes, of course, we can do that. Then obviously, we can do it. So probably, um, it, you know, if you would like to, um, if you would like to join in, probably what we can do is, um, it, is that all right, Dan? Have we got time? Oh, it's, yeah, it's only eight oh six. Um, okay, so though those are pod one. I haven't looked through us all. So pod one and two, those who are here, um, the I, I absolutely respect their privacy. Um, what we can do is sync up. Uh, first of all, pod one, um, we can do that. You don't have to reveal who you are if you don't want to, but also if you want to share something as well, you know, anyone from pod one or two, do you feel? Um, and, yep, yeah, so at the moment what we're doing is we're going to focus on gratitude as a wave guide. How about that? Because, you know, the gratitude for us being able to be here um, at Fractal U and all together because collectively you know, we are creating coherence, are we not? So first of all, is if that's okay with pod one, anybody want to, anybody from Hi, pod Jen. one want to say? Yay. Do you listen to me? Mm, I can hear you. 
So I love when Dan says that we are electrical fields that become intelligent, and he is uh, doing a great job explaining us what that geometry works. I'm very interested in the geometry of the fields to understand how we become intelligent. So uh, the work that you do with him, uh, with your experience, and you seeing yourself the fields that we don't see, but obviously is all what it is, it's wonderful. And your courage to work this at the right time, you know, and your discipline to be precise in something that is so important to be close to pure principle, as Dan says, is wonderful, it's inspiring, and your work is literally evolutionary. So hopefully we can all together help you move forward this because it's wonderful, your job, and I'm so happy to be part. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Nico. Thank you, Nico. <laughs> Mm. Okay. Um, okay. So we we're starting. To, we're focus on gratitude. We'll do a short, uh, what we call the inner smile, in order to um, synchronize and and we start uh, we start our journey every week with this. Um, is that all right? Pod one. Well, I I just take it that it's all right. Pod one and two. And um, everyone who wants to join in. So this is a, it's a, a Taoist um, um, meditation in which we are starting to learn and starting to focus our attention inside to be able to open our inner eyes um, and feel, open the eyes of the heart and the third eye as well. So if you just, just get comfortable, um, shut your eyes and all we're going to do is smile um, sh smile with your eyes shut I'll probably keep my own open to keep an eye on you all and um, what you're doing is um, the Taoist technique is in order to generate charge and to recharge the organs and the systems internally um, and so smile into your heart and feel that gratitude of us of being all together here Put some good breaths, remember to breathe. Breathe into your heart. Okay, pod one, we're coming into a sink now. There we go, very strong. You may feel tingles. Um, my hair is very powerful, is my hair standing up on end? So continue to focus on the waveguide of gratitude that we're all going to surf that long wave. Smiling into our hearts and then occasionally open your eyes and look at, look at the, all the other beautiful people on the screen. And there's Daniel. And then shut your eyes again. Now, when we, sh when we shut our outer eyes, it opens the inner eye. And I know that it puts us into wonderful alpha frequency resonance. Takes us out of our, um, the external, what I call mundane reality. Um, anyone in pod one, anyone who would like to uh, voice some impressions? please do, um, about uh, what you're feeling. At the moment, we are holding a, a, a very stable sink, and it's not just pod one, it's all, the, all our other friends as well. Anyone from pod one or two want to put some impressions in, please? This is yes, Maura. Ben. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Maura. Go ahead. You go ahead. I would just I was just gonna say really quickly that I feel a lot of charge, um, a lot of energy. And it's very powerful and very focused. Um, definitely feeling it and feeling like the density of having more people in the group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, I'm feeling a beautiful uh, con conjugation of the wave energy, and I'm seeing it in my mind's eye as 
um, waves forming up in the ocean um, very gently and uh, and then lapping over. Um, yeah, a very thick, dense and beautiful liquidy feeling. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Michelle. Oh, yes. the, um, there's a there's a slight um, we the density of plasma we're starting to identify different spins um, which we might call density and one of those we're calling honey plasma but yes so it's a there is a it, there's a sense of a sort of a delicious warmness and slightly more viscous than water a bit a bit like runny honey um, very golden. And this is what we call the pl honey plasma healing, uh, healing uh, spin that um, that we use very well. It is around us a lot, is it not? Pod one and two. So bathe in the honey plasma and feel the gratitude. Okay. So keep uh, keep bathing in it. Any more questions, Tufan, while we're um, bathing in the glow? <laughs> sure. Um, Brittany asks if we can strengthen practice and train to lucid dream with the team. Can you? Yes. Yes, most certainly. The um, we'll uh, we'll put up the um, the subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, leave your emails, and we will send you a link to the Telegram, um, the Telegram group chat at the moment. And also those, I say we're we're getting a course together, so whereby we are bringing people on board, helping you to know, um, you know how what you want to be. Basically, we have we have all sorts from all around the planet. Um, we we mostly work half there's half men half women um, those who are uh, identifying that gender um, and yet there's a lot of an incredible lo uh, wholeness of uh, and coherence of balance between the genders so we have warriors and healers bards uh, we have ground crew those who want to be re just really grounded and and um, holding space in that way. Um, we have the seers and uh, and navigators. So there's plenty to learn. Um, Bob Sean said, do you know any practical tips to achieve lucidity in dreams other than setting the attention before dreaming and looking at your hands in the dream? Remember that when you look at your hand in a dream, what you're doing is you know, doing the homunculus do loop is tightening, and so your aura is compressing. And uh, so setting the intention and keeping the dream journal every day, everything that, that makes the focus more dense. I just remember when Jenny and I started this, actually, one of the things we knew was that the planet collectively needs the immune system of having lucid dreaming teams, which can eventually function as a kind of immune system for the planet in terms of interstellar parasites and many things. And, and, and tornado steerers, <laughs> it's an important function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't, I don't think I've used the word shaman very much, but um, obviously shaman, what we understand as shamanic qualities um, and cap capabilities are those that we are developing as well. So to be to be of use to our communities and uh, collectively as well. Um, so the, yes, as Dan's saying, uh, dream journaling, um, I would suggest the first thing that you do is you you ask yourself the question, um, you know, why do I want to see why? And then what do I want to see? And you take those into your night dreaming and those questions by setting the intention of, and the focus of those questions, you will be woken up with the answers, sit up, write them down immediately um, and do that for at least 30 days because we know that it takes 30 days for our brains to change our minds literally. Um, and it does mean that, um, you know, your, your life is going to change because, you know, 
big dreams change lives. We start small and, and we work up in um, in that way. Beautiful, beautiful. Wonderful. Uh, we have some questions on the YouTube live stream. Um, maybe we can go over a couple of them. Mm -hmm. So the first one is, is, DM, is a DMT trip the same as a lucid dream? So, uh, you know, we think that DMT uh, adds to the threshold of connectivity at the synapse. And so it kind of opens some doors. But if you rely on external chemistry, sometimes there are other issues like holes in the aura. So in the, it's, it's not really our expertise. My expertise is the external chemistry. And certainly there's a role, there's a place for that and it's real. But if you can't achieve it naturally, obviously, it's probably mm -hmm. more empowering. Well, because it is, yes, because it is released naturally, is it not? Mm -hmm. um, and certainly during the, uh, journey times, it, it is, I know that it is released. It's not something that we don't use um, external augmentation of any sort, either etheric or um, plant-based uh, mechanical, what, whatever. So no, I would say it's not the same. All right. Um, can lucid dreaming lead to out-of-body experience if you want it? Or is it necessary to stay in the dream? Um, I most definitely will trigger out of out of body uh, responses and reactions. Yes. So part of what we're doing is uh, with setting our intention and, and staying safe, being able to um, self reference to have the highest integrity, so that we don't end up with low spin you know, in astral low spin realms and um, uh, entities um, to keep your astral hygiene very, very high. But yeah, and yes, it will trigger out of body um, what we call excorporeal excursion, the EE. Um, it will definitely trigger that. Yeah. And we think that even Monroe Institute, they were using golden ratio cascades in the brainwave. And that implosion in part can be that tornado that, that enables the tornado to move out of the body uh, and so, so recognizing that it's the densification that allows something coherent enough that the tornado can move outside your head. And then there's a whole series of hygiene issues around that, like don't try to do it in an aluminum box. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or after you've been drinking alcohol, yes. particularly, or exactly. taking any, any, any sort of drugs or medication, pharma, pharmaceutical. Okay. So, Okay, um, this question comes to Dan, um, to one of Dan's comments in the first half of this lecture. Is the fractal overlay tied together via the energy array? The energy array? Yes, I think you were referring to the fractal overlay of the galaxy and the planet and the energy yeah. grid, I believe. Yes, yeah, so, so what we're saying is that, that as Bearden proved, the Longitudinal EMF is what gravity waves are made of. So when you spectrum analyze and you find lower and lower frequencies present, you're finding longer wave and literally bigger maps. And it is embedding. And it is an array on a side of an array. But this is more than a metaphor. It will show up in a spectrum analysis. And, and the fractality perfected is what makes density increase. And that's what increases the leverage to steer bigger tornadoes. So these, these are more than metaphors. This is serious electrical engineering available by spectrum analysis. We know what the next dimension is. It's not subjective. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're definitely going to have lots of fun at the conference, are we not? When, <laughs> um, when, you, when toys come together with, uh, with the lucid dreaming team. Yes, we do some brainwave work. Yeah. We're yeah. going to have fun. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Okay. Uh, what could one do if they have a trust issue, but they would want to join the Lucid Dream Pod? Mm, well, thanks for being open with it. I think that's that's what the first step is. It's is sharing that if if someone has trust issues, I think that's a very intimate thing to share. So thank you for sharing it and. Um, uh, of course, we we respect privacy. We we'll, we we work with it as as best we can. And if, when, if when you we think about it, it, you know, everyone has trust issues to do with intimacy, um, as in which is uh, uh, stating our boundaries and then being compassionate 
towards others as well. That's why we need to kind of fall in love with each other first, or at least cry for each other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aircrete Harry just raised his hand. Hi, uh, I just wanted to share some experiences. I had some tips that I feel would help a lot of people to have these experiences. Um, I, I started in 2013 having out-of-body experiences after reading Robert Monroe's books. And since then, I, I practiced almost every day uh, having out-of-body experiences. But what I found was almost every time I did not leave my body, I would have a lucid dream. And they were so incredible, so exciting to completely control my dreams. Uh, uh, and, and they were really exciting. So uh, some of the tips I wanted to share that I went through, these are experiences that I went through. And one of them is juicing. When I started a juice fast, the energy in my body increased massively. And this began helping me with lucid dreams and astral projecting, uh, out of body experience. So uh, there's something to consider is a juice fast. Uh, fasting is very good spiritually, but I prefer juice fast because I'm still getting all my nourishments. Uh, when it comes to leaving body or lucid dreaming or that realm, what I found was the key uh, tool to use is love. Uh, you didn't have to worry about working on not fearing anything if you just worked on love. So if you worked on changing every bad thought you might have to a positive loving thought as a start to the practice, this helps massively because I didn't have any guidance when I was playing around the astral realm. So I ran into entities that were very scary and very real. But once I learned to love them, I had no more problems with these entities. And so love is a key, very key. And if you could practice remembering the thought of love, the feeling of love and trying to hold that for as long as you can, it's a great practice because you'll be resonating that. And another tip I want to give is for me, John Velo Malchizedek's Awakening the Illuminated Heart Meditation was a very powerful meditation. And it was after this learning this meditation that I began seeing with my third eye. I don't always see, but at least five times I've seen with my third eye. And it's amazing to experience these things. So I just wanted to share those because I, I really believe in lucid dreaming and, and out of body experience. I feel everyone should experience it at least once to make you realize how we are all spiritually all connected and we were just one, you know, we're just brothers and sisters in this world. <laughs> and so I'm a big believer in this. And also, binaural beats, Flame and Sound has binaural beats. Monroe had the binaural beats. Another very important tool for for having these yeah, experiences. Pure sound implosion. Harry, you're wonderful. Perfect. <laughs> what do you think, Jenny? I thought that was great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Harry. Um, that, shall we wrap up now? As, uh, ha have we got more questions? It's um, 8.25. Are we, oh, for me, it's 8.25. How are we doing? We have cleared all questions. We are good to go. It's wow. a happily ever after. <laughs> yes. yes, wonderful. So we're just finishing up as in, um, you know, it, imagine yourself coming back into your heart and um, oh, waving, waving everybody hello and goodbye, and then we'll all be regrounded and make sure yeah, keep keep clearing, keep grounding, um, drink lots of water. Happy to journey with you all. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Jenny. This has been <laughs> magical. Thank you, everyone. It really felt like community today. We had such fun. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks. You. Blessings and blessings. Blessings, Bye, everyone. blessings everyone. Love, love everyone. Thank you. Lovely See smile. you in the dream. Harry Bye. says it's about love. I think he's right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Mm-hmm.